Hi, I'm Aaron Repke, Director of Product Marketing for Electric Actuation at Emerson. Today we're talking about the Bettis RTS Failsafe Quarter Turn Electric Actuator. We've got it mounted here on a Fisher V-Ball valve, and we're going to talk about some basic setup and configuration of this actuator. You'll want to refer to your user manual and be careful to note all instructions and safety recommendations. We'll give you an overview of the Betis RTS failsafe quarter turn actuator. Here we have the user interface. At the end, we have the electromagnetic brake that holds the failsafe mechanism in position and also an eddy current brake that regulates the speed of the failsafe stroke. The motor is located inside of the chamber here. The terminal block is down below in this case, however, it can be rotated in various positions. We have the output drive coming uh, out here with the worm gear, planetary gear, a ball screw assembly, and then you have a rack and pinion coming across here. We have the spring for mechanical failsafe purposes, and then the rack and pinion with the pinion driving through to the valve shaft. At the end is a uh, mechanical position end stop. We're going to talk about uh, rotating the user interface. You can refer to the instructions in section 5.2 of the user manual. You will also need a five millimeter Allen key to complete this activity. First of all, we want to turn off power because we will be opening up the electronic enclosure. Power is off. And we're going to remove the four hex head uh, bolts at the corners of the user interface. These are captive screws, so you don't have to worry about uh, losing them. All four bolts are loose now and we'll carefully remove the display cover. Now we have the display removed. You'll see there's a um, electrical connection here. You wanna be careful of that. But basically this display can now be rotated in 90 degree increments and reinstalled to best fit your application. Just be mindful not to uh, snag the electrical connection on anything and not to over-rotate it. So we'll demonstrate here just moving at 90 degrees. Again, carefully put the cover back on. It's a tight fit. And you'll snug down the fasteners again. Tighten them up in a star type pattern according to the user manual. And torque specifications are in the user manual. We're ready to power back up. Everything's completely uh, reassembled and ready to go. There you have it. We'll be demonstrating the mechanical failsafe capability of the Betis RTS actuator. And we'll also be showing you how you can vary the speed of that mechanical failsafe. You can reference section 6.6 .6 in the user manual. You'll also need a five millimeter Allen key for this job. So to acquaint you with our setup here, we have the actuator fully open. You can see 100% open on the display. 
the spring return will be what uh, triggers the fail safe and moves the valve. And we do have the actuator set up on a four inch Fisher V-ball valve. So first step will be to fail the actuator and we'll show you what that looks like at the slowest operating speed. The first step to adjusting the speed of the mechanical fail safe stroke is to remove the cover on the brake system. But before we do that, we'll wanna make sure that the actuator is in the fail position here at 0% and that the power is off. For this operation, you'll need a five millimeter Allen key. We'll remove the four bolts that are in the end of the uh, actuator brake cover. You'll want to carefully remove the cover on the brake and set it aside. In order to make the adjustment on the eddy current brake, we're going to need a three millimeter Allen key. We'll be loosening, but not removing four bolts. One is here, the top, one on the side, one on the other side, and one on the bottom. We're gonna insert the Allen key into the borehole here and rotate it clockwise in order to move it to the maximum speed position. Next, we'll rotate. No, gotta loosen it up more. We'll rotate the eddy current brake and retighten the screws holding the brake in position. Finally, we'll need to reinstall our brake cover. Sliding it on carefully, making sure to not snag any of the wires and lining the holes for the screws. Again, our five millimeter hex head Allen key will be used here. We've got the cover back on, and now we'll demonstrate the fail-safe functionality now with the setting at the highest speed. The brake cover is fully assembled back on the actuator, power is back on, and we have the valve and actuator in the fully open position. So now you'll see the fail-safe speed at that top end of the range for the RTS. Once we kill power,
Now we'll talk about the user interface of the Betis RTS actuator. You can reference section seven in the user manual. The user interface has a graphical display and also LEDs at the top, which provide various indicators. The switch on the left is the selector switch to go from remote, off, and local control. The switch on the right controls navigation through the menu, as well as control of the actuator opening and closing functions, open up and close down. And the LEDs indicate various functionalities. Blue uh, light indicates Bluetooth. The red in that same position is the IR activation. You have uh, open and close green and red LEDs for open and close position of the valve, which can be flip-flopped depending on the configuration at your facility, and a one and two LED which provide some uh, troubleshooting capabilities and diagnostic information. So if we want to move the position of the valve, we can move the control switch into local mode. You can see the hand position here, it means local, and then we can operate the valve using the switch on the right side. Now these switches have a unique capability that they can be moved uh, very slightly to just inch the position of the valve. They can be moved kind of a medium open or medium close, and they can be latched either fully open or fully closed. The indicator on the right side of the screen shows you how much that switch is being activated. Now if we want to look through the menus, we put it in the off position. If we go up, this gives us some uh, outputs of binary outputs, binary inputs, uh, your analog values, four to 20, absolute values of position and torque, firmware, serial numbers, uh, counter values, hours on the motor runtime, and so forth. It also has a log of the history of events here. So 20 of the last uh, activities that happened on this actuator, you can cycle through those and see the date and timestamp on them. Now, if we go down in the menu, then you go through all of the configuration. So starting with end limits, again, if we move very slightly on the switch, we can just go one by one through the functions. If we go at a larger step with a switch, we can jump through sections of the menu to move to the area of the menu that we're most interested in. I'll be demonstrating here how you can change the speed of the Betis RTS actuator. This actuator has a brushless DC motor in it with variable frequency drive technology. So it allows you to make modifications to the speed of the actuator without changing the motor or any of the gearing. It's a newer technology in the world of actuation and a very exciting feature of this product. So in order to make a modification to the speed of this actuator, first we're going to need the switch in the off position, and then we're going to navigate down to section four is speed. And you can reference section 8.3 in the user manual for this operation. So here we have a local open, 4.1 is local open, uh, if we go down a notch, uh, 4.2 is local closed. We can keep navigating remote open, remote closed, emergency open, emergency closed. For this exercise, we're just going to change the local speed. And let's say we want the uh, closing speed to be slower. Maybe we're worried about water hammer. So local close, right now it's set at 72.2 RPM. That's the maximum speed. It's asking me, do I want to edit this value? You have check mark yes. X, no. So yes, I want to edit the value. Just a quick um, move up on the switch. And you can see now it's switched over to save. So it's asking me, do I want to save this value? Um, no, we want to modify this value. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to modify the value. And again, that switch, depending on if you fully latch it, it's going to move down quickly. And you can kind of uh, tweak it up or down, depending on what you need. You want to go quickly up, just latch it up. So let's say we want to go down to 30 RPM. So we want to cut it about in half. So I'm going to go down. Let's see. OK.
There we have it at 30. Now again, asking me if I want to save. Yes, I want to save, so up. And it took the save because now it's switched to edit. No, I don't want to edit. I'm, I'm satisfied with the 30. And let's assume that if we go up a notch, local open, we want to keep that where it is at the maximum speed. So we've got maximum speed on open. We've got about half of that for the close and we're satisfied with this configuration. So now I want to test it. You'll see, I'll switch it into local mode and we're at fully open. So I'm going to close the valve. So you can see the speed here. This is about half of the maximum speed. We'll run it down a little ways. Good enough. All right, and then you'll see on the way up, that's at maximum speed going open. So much faster operation going up is the way we had to have it set up right now. And that's how you adjust the speeds on the Betis RTS actuator.